Today we need to review some terminology, comparison words, when we talk about concentrations of solutions. There are three main terms that we use in order to describe how concentrated a solution is relative to its surroundings. The first term is called hypertonic. Hypertonic means that it's more concentrated. So a better description for that is that there's more solute or more things dissolved in the solution, which would mean there's less water compared to the things dissolved. A hypotonic solution is less concentrated. So there's less solute, fewer things dissolved, which would mean that there's more water compared to the amount of the solute. Then there's an isotonic solution. Iso means the same or equal, and these would be a solution that would be equal concentrations, or we would say it's at equilibrium. Remember, that's a similar term. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause and try, and I would like you to determine, given the following diagrams, 1% salt, and then 10% salt, 10% salt, 1% salt, and then 1% and 10% again. Um, the circle represents a cell, so in this case we would have 1% salt inside the cell and 10% salt outside the cell, and determine which one is more concentrated or where it's hypertonic. And in this situation, the same thing, there's going to be 10% salt inside the cell and 1% salt outside. And in this situation, there's 10% salt, 10 salt inside and 10% salt outside. All right, let's see how you did. In this situation, the water would leave the cell because if it's 1% salt inside, the rest of the solution would be 99% water. So it's 99% water inside the cell. If it's a 10% salt solution, there would be 90% water. So we would have 99% water in, 90% out. Remember, it's going to diffuse based on concentration going from high to low. Remember, water diffuses, not salt. So the water will diffuse from the cell to the surroundings. So it will leave the cell or diffuse out of the cell. In this case, we call this a hypertonic solution, meaning that the solution surrounding the cell is more concentrated, has more things dissolved, therefore it would have a lower concentration of water. In our second scenario that we have, we're putting it into what's called a hypotonic solution. So in this scenario, 10% salt would give us a 90% water solution, and a 1% salt would give us 99. So there's 90% water inside, 99 outside. Remember to ask yourself, where is there more water? There's more water outside, so which direction would the water move? The water would move into the cell. The water would diffuse into the cell by, by osmosis because it's going from an area of high, 99%, to an area of low. In this case, we put it into what's called a hypotonic solution. The isotonic solution, you can see, has the same percentage of salt inside and outside, which would then mean that it would have the same percentage of water, 90% inside, 90% outside. They're equal. The water's going to move both ways, equal in, equal out, constantly moving but keeping the concentrations equal to each other. Now in each of these situations, we try to think about what would happen to the cell. If we put the cell into a hypertonic solution, meaning it's going to be more concentrated, and the water leaves the cell, as it leaves the cell, if it's an animal cell, the cytoplasm will shrink, the plant cell will do the same thing, the cytoplasm will shrink, it will lose water. In the case of the plant cells, the water vacuole will lose water as well because it's losing water to the surroundings. So sometimes I like to look at the E in hypertonic, a lowercase e kind of looks like it's a little deflated. So in this case, it looks a little deflated because the cell has lost water to its surroundings. In the case of a hypotonic solution, if I put my cell into a hypotonic solution, one that's less concentrated, the water moved into the cell by diffusion. I like to look at the O in hypotonic. It kind of looks like it's bulging and swollen. And that's kind of what would happen to our cell. Our cell would swell up and bulge a little bit. The isotonic solution would have no change. Let's move on to some diagrams for examples of what would happen in a real cell as opposed to our simulated cells. 
So the effects of osmosis on plant and animal cells. Now remember, osmosis is just a fancy term for the diffusion of water. So here are our three words again, slightly rearranged. We start with a hypertonic solution. The hypertonic solution in an animal cell, remember, doesn't have a rigid cell wall. The cell itself would appear to somewhat shrink in size because that cytoplasm has shrunk. The cell membrane will stay surrounding the cytoplasm and that's because the water moves out. In the case of a plant cell, it's primarily the large vacuole in the cytoplasm that lose water, but remember it has a rigid cell wall. So as the plant cell loses water, the cell membrane will appear to have shrunk because the cytoplasm and the water vacuole have lost water. The cell wall stays in the same place. We call this plasmalizing. In the case of an isotonic solution, we have equal water going in and equal water going out, so there will be no change in size or appearance of the cells. In a hypotonic solution, remember the hypotonic solution will cause water to diffuse into the cells. In the case of an animal cell, it will actually do something called lyse, L-Y-S-E, lyse, and that basic, basically means to swell and burst. And remember, this is primarily because the animal cell doesn't have a rigid cell wall surrounding it. It just has a soft cell membrane. So as the water goes in, you can almost think of it as almost like blowing up a balloon too big. And if you blow up the balloon too much, eventually that stretches and stretches and stretches and explodes on you. And that's what happens in the cells. In a plant cell with that rigid cell wall, it will become firmer and firmer and firmer and won't usually explode or lice like an animal cell wall cell will um, because of that rigid cell wall. As it becomes fuller and fuller, we use the term turgid, or some people pronounce it turgid. Um, we call that turgor pressure. As the water comes into the cell, it creates pressure on that cell wall and it also does help it to keep its shape. So think about a plant that has lost water. Maybe you forgot to water it. It's been outside on a very dry day. If that plant cell, all of the plant cells in a plant have lost too much water, those cells have less turgor pressure and they can collapse on themselves. And think about a plant that you haven't watered in a while. What happens to it? You're right, it wilts. And as it wilts, it wilts because there isn't any more turgor pressure or pressure on the cell wall in order to help give it its shape to stand up straight so that it doesn't collapse on itself. So think of a plant that you haven't watered in a long time for the plasmolysis or plasmolyze. And that's it for our hypotonic, hypotonic, and isotonic solutions today.